Why am I so awkward when I throw? <laughs> it is so hard sometimes to just watch this, these videos of me and be like, uh, you look so staccato. And for those of you who are into music, you'll understand what that means. It's basically very short and terse musical notes that you play. And that's how I feel like when I'm throwing, everything is so short and terse that it, it, it makes it hard to watch. And it's really frustrating why I'm not as smooth as some of these pros. And you know, maybe you feel the same way. And if you do, I'm really happy that you're watching this video because we're going to address some of these things. Now, like you saw in the title and the thumbnail, we're talking about this gliding effect. And gliding is how we can all start throwing so much smoother. For so long, when it came to disc golf, I focused on shifting my weight, really moving my weight and momentum from my back leg to my front leg. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, it does cause an imbalance. Think about it like this, when you're walking, when is the singular moment that you are most vulnerable to falling over? Well, it's when you're foot is in midair and you only have one foot on the ground. And while it only happens for a split second, if someone were to push you during that moment, you would lose your balance. Maybe not completely fall over, but you would at least stagger and you know try to regain that balance. Now consider the side shuffle. We see this in a lot of sports, basketball, volleyball, the baseball diamond. You see this movement with a lot of players who need to make quick lateral movements. Notice how they're low, they're, they're in this athletic position, their knees are bent, their back is hunched just a little bit, keeping things nice and loose. They're not rigid, they're not staccato. <laughs> and as they move, you know, their, their shoulders are never outside their hips. They're, they're never leaking outside their knee. There's always this central movement that they're always staying within themselves and yet they're moving so fast and so almost seems like crazy, especially some of these basketball players. So many sports require you to glide that it's highly likely you're in the same camp as me and you just didn't realize it. You know how to do this, especially if you've played other sports. You just haven't made the mental and muscle connection to that yet. And so I'm hoping that this video will help all of you make that connection and really speed up your backhand progress. So here's how we want to glide. Step one's very easy, assume an athletic position. For step two, in that athletic position, with someone like me who has a basketball background, I'm going to kind of pretend that I'm doing a crossover. And just notice how I'm shifting, and my shoulders are never coming off my line. They're never leaving this plane that I have them set on, but my hips are moving and I'm staying central in that movement. I'm not leaking outside of my knees. There's step three is paying attention to your torso and core, watching how they're not leaking out. So you want to do this crossover move or you want to get ready if you're a volleyball player, former volleyball player, getting ready to kind of set up a dig or a set as you're moving across the ground with your hips gliding. Just pay attention to your upper body and what it's doing. Now step four, I want you to pick up a disc and just kind of stagger your step a little bit because we need to have a stagger in our throw. And just notice how your body moves and how your torso stays on that same line. You wanna maintain a flat plane for your upper body. You don't wanna be popping up. Now, if you're like me, one of the biggest issues you've had this entire time with your backhand throw is popping up at the very end. We get everything right and then all of a sudden as we're throwing, we're popping up. And that's because we have this almost like this dipping motion where we think we're gonna get more power as we swing the disc through. And that's causing our body to just kind of pop right up and we actually lose power and lose distance as you've probably noticed. And this next part's gonna take a little bit of getting used to, but now as we do this, just keep your arm loose and actually throw the disc. It's gonna feel a little funky, it's gonna feel a little loose coming out of your hand, but as you get used to this mo movement, you'll get better with throwing the disc and allowing your hips to glide and really propel the disc from your power pocket. 
This new movement is going to take some time and it's going to feel awkward a little bit at first, but I promise you I've already been noticing huge differences in my throat and I think you will too. The most important thing is that you connect this movement to something else you've done. It doesn't necessarily matter which sport because pretty much all sports use the hips. And so if you can just connect this gliding movement from a previous activity you've done, you'll be able to make that muscular connection and your brain will be like, oh, we've done this before. And that will really help you implement this gliding effect into your throw, which is going to help you stay nice and level throughout your follow through and get more distance, more accuracy, and more power without actually feeling like you're doing anything more. Now, by no means am I going to promise an instantaneous effect of 50, 75, or 100 feet of distance. I don't think that's realistic, and there are very few people who can make a tiny change like this and immediately get that distance repeatedly but you are going to start noticing a lot more power in your throw when you do it right. Now, a lot of this has to do with timing like we talked about in the previous video, and a lot of the things we're gonna talk about after this video are going to affect this timing as well. But as you work on this timing, and as you work on gliding these hips, that's going to help you really start to implement good, positive, body movement that's going to get the disc further down the fairway with way less effort. So I hope you guys found this gliding drill effective, something that you can do whether you're in your bedroom, your living room, out at the course waiting to throw, or on a field. It's really great and it helps you kind of get your mind and your body in this particular movement so that you can execute it to perfection. Until next time everybody, have a great round.